Assalamu alaikum. Um, today I am going to be doing a short discussion about some issues that people feel are affecting uh, Muslim women in in the U.S. and I suppose in Canada as well. Um, so basically in the West. So I have a couple different topics to start off with and we'll see where we can go from there. So the the first uh, issue I have to discuss is women becoming unmasked, um, which is something that happens. It's something that's been talked about in convert circles, uh, not particular pertain particularly pertaining to women, though of course it does pertain to women. Um, but now we're going to talk about it within the entire Muslim community of converts and people who have been raised Muslim, um, but in particular women. So for those of you who don't, who aren't familiar with the concept, um, being unmasked, as it's called, um, basically just means you, you don't attend a mosque or you don't have um, a mosque to call home, so to speak. Um, some, for some people, such as myself, it happens just by default. Um, I've only been back living in this country for you know less than a year and when you move to a country or anywhere uh, across state lines even the adjustment that takes um it just you know you have to find a house find a job etc etc so i'm sure there are a lot of people like that who are unmasked by default just because they don't have a lot of available resources to to find a home mosque. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, I've been sick, so I apologize if I have to do that a few times. Um, okay, so more to the point though, because we're not talking about default unmasking, is people who have in the past gone to a mosque or attended a particular mosque regularly, but then quit because they felt unwelcome. As I mentioned, this is something that a lot of converts have have spoken about, but now we're going to talk about it in the context of women in particular. So, um, I had a question that was sent to me, has this improved in the last five years, this particular topic? Uh, I can't, I can't say that, I can't say whether it has improved or not. Um, with confidence because as I said I have been out of the country for some time however I, I do think that more awareness is being brought to it there have been a couple of women's only spaces uh, that have opened up across the country um, so that that does definitely speak to how women are feeling in mosque communities um, uh, uh, people like to react to those women only mosques and say like, oh, you know, that's bid'ah, that's haram. You can't have that sort of thing. You can't exclude the men. You can't have women only. Um, but you, I think the important thing is to look at the root of that. Why are there women only spaces? Because women are not welcome in other mosques. Now, this isn't true of all mosques, of course. Um, there are many, and I, the one that I have attended in the past. Um, I have found to be very welcoming both as a convert and as a woman so it's not all of them um, but a lot of them have you know women shoved into a corner um, you know put in downstairs in the basement um, there's I mean I personally don't think there's need to have separate entrances for women and men but for many mosques that do have these separate entrances, the women's entrance, and I'm not just saying this to make stuff up. I mean, I've seen this with my own eyes and gone in these entrances before. Um, they're, you know, dirty. The water in the, the sink you're supposed to wash up in is dripping. It's moldy. Um, you know, like there's no care taken to the women's side. So it, it follows logically. I mean, if that's where people are giving you space to pray, why would you go there? Why would you want to be there? Um, this, whereas, you know, many, many mosques in, uh, in certain countries overseas simply do not allow women, which is of course wrong. 
uh, the issue that we face here in the Western countries is not so much a blatant exclusion of women as it is a, for lack of a more finessed term to describe it, a passive-aggressive letting us know that we're not welcome. I mean, yes, come in and pray, sister, in the basement where it's dripping and there might be rats, but there's a space for you. You understand what I'm saying? So that is, I guess that's the issue. Whether or not it's getting better, I can't, I, like I said, I can't say. Um, however, before we criticize, and I'm kind of talking around in circles here, but before we start criticizing um, women who have created their own spaces in the Muslim community, we should look at the traditional mosque spaces and see, well, is there anything that we're doing here that has pushed women away, that has made women not want to come? Um, before you start criticizing, you should look at yourself and see what you're doing that can be changed. Um, if there are any follow-up questions, I will try and get to them as I see them scrolling by on my phone screen. Uh, for the moment, I'm going to talk about another topic that uh, that someone submitted as a question. It's about hijab, uh, everyone's favorite. Hijab and marriage, the two most favorite topics. Um, so this is not about marriage, just hijab. Uh, the question is how, uh, I, I, I'm not phrasing it exactly as it was submitted to me, but it was how can how can we wear hijab in such a hostile climate as we are in today? Um, how can we wear hijab and feel safe? Um, that's a good question. As you can see, I I wear hijab. Um, I also come from a privileged position since I am a white convert. I come from a position of assuming that I'm going to be safe uh, when I go out. So, I do suppose I have a level of confidence that I'm going to be okay, which both helps me project confidence when I'm out of the house, um, which, and I, I'm trying to tread carefully here because if you, if you're not confident and something happens to you, it's not your fault. It's not ever your fault if, if someone harasses you or attacks you, God forbid, or anything like that. Um, but having an air of confidence, I suppose, can help at some times. Um, so that's from, you know, my, my position of privilege that I have that not, not everyone is, is able to just function in the world every day, assuming they're going to be safe. And as a convert, you know, that there is, there was an adjustment, um, because I've had people follow me through stores when I was, of course, when I was alone with my child. They never do it when you're with your husband because people are cowardly. Um, I've, you know, I've definitely had my share of scary experiences. Um, there's nothing that I can say that makes it easier to go out in public wearing hijab in this climate, frankly. Um, every day you make the choice whether or not to put it on and you go with that choice. I know that's really terrible advice. There's, I mean, this is a question I've asked myself. I've asked myself, like, is there a point at which I would stop wearing hijab because I feel unsafe? And I suppose, I suppose there is theoretically that a point um, I have not reached that point myself and I cannot, and I'm certainly not going to speak on the permissibility of removing hijab in, in a time of danger. That's not something I'm qualified to, but I do encourage, um, any brothers in the comments to refrain from talking about this particular point because you are not qualified to talk about it either. Um, less qualified than any of the random women who might be in the comments as well. 
Um, all I can say to whoever, whoever the, uh, whoever it is that submitted this question, um, I don't, <laughs> I don't have any, any tips or tricks. It's, I mean, I, I struggle with these things as well. I definitely struggle with these things. Um, I struggle with, you know, deciding whether to continue wearing hijab, um, and, and I'm in a really lucky position where I, I typically don't feel threatened day to day. The people I work with are great. Um, I live in a, a, a neighborhood where I feel safe. I've never really felt blatantly unsafe, alhamdulillah. I've been very, very fortunate. I don't know if, I don't know where I would be uh, in terms of hijab if I, if that weren't the case. Um, all I can say, and I, again, I wish I could be more constructive than this, is to make da uh, to Allah that he'll guide you and he'll keep you safe, inshallah. Um, it's, it can be difficult. It really can. And I suppose, um, it, and I suppose it, uh, excuse me, I, I'm sorry, I got distracted for just a moment and I completely lost my train of thought. Um, I suppose what, what I would, what I would say generally is, um, you know, like I said, make ta'a and remember the persecution that the early Muslims faced as well. Um, Alhamdulillah, even though we face some really scary things, um, I think, you know, some of us have seen that, that punish a Muslim letter that was circulating in East London. Um, you know, there are some scary things going on, but inshallah, it won't be as, as blatant and as um, directly dangerous as it was in the time of, of the Prophet, inshallah. Um, this is, uh, this isn't a marriage service, uh, so can we not ask for leads on marriages in the comments? Thank you. Um, also, if, especially, well, no, I don't, I don't think this is a convert only thing. The only reason that I would single out converts in this is just because most of us, but this this happens for some uh, some people have been raised Muslim as well. You know, most of us have gone a good chunk of our life without wearing hijab, and then we put it back on. Um, but that might be true of women who who are not um, or who are who are raised Muslim as well. So, reach out to your other Muslim sisters for support. I'm usually lurking in the comments, um, mostly yelling at people for saying sexist things. But um, I'm usually lurking in the comments and. If you get in touch with the About Islam page and you you wanted to reach out to someone, uh, you know, you can ask to be put in touch with me and I, I totally wouldn't mind being that support person for you. Um, that is for women who want some support about being Muslim and operating as Muslim every day in the West, not for random people. Okay. Um, a couple of other points, um, and uh, again, these these are not specific to uh, Muslims living in the West. However, I'm going to sort of tailor it to fit as best I can. Um, there are very few, you know, like Western only issues just because a lot of people kind of treat it as a like a dichotomy you're either in the Muslim world or in the West and it's not really the case um, but this this does affect us here um, and I just wanted to touch briefly about um, different paths in life uh, usually no not usually but oftentimes um, Muslim women we push our children especially our daughters, into a certain mold. Um, we expect that she's going to get married. Of course, we expect that of, of our sons, too. We expect our children are going to get married. We expect they're going to have children. Um, for, for women, sometimes it can be a bit more insidious because obviously you want your, your daughter to be educated, but then there's not always, of course, but there is a sort of underlying assumption that that women are going to be home taking care of the kids. Excuse me. 
Um, and I think that I just wanted to caution everyone against pushing our daughters into that mold. Um, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say something that I think is an unpopular opinion, but I do not believe that um, being married or getting married is, is a requirement in Islam. And I do not believe that having children or wanting to have children is a requirement. I believe that very firmly. And we should be respectful of our children, our sons and daughters. Um, our sons and daughters, especially our daughters. I'm sorry, I keep on getting distracted when new comments pop up because I want to follow them and I want to read, but then I lose my train of thought. Um, okay, talking about getting married. Yes, I have a favorite topic. So, um, so yes, while we might have this expectation, certain expectations, um, it's none of your business if I'm married. We might have certain expectations um, of our daughters in particular. Um, it's it's not really for us to choose. We need to remember to allow our children to choose their own path, whether it is, you know, having children and staying home, even though they spent $10,000 on their degree, that is, um, uh, you know, that is their, that's their choice to make just as much as it is their choice to make, uh, to not get married or to not have children and pursue a career or whatever. I think that we really get wrapped up in what the Islamic way is when, when you really have to remember that a lot of these things that we had in place didn't exist back in the time of the Prophet, so we can't say whether it's Islamic or not. Um, but you, we should really be cautious about pushing one way of life onto our kids, in particular onto our daughters. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. I have a, I have a couple of um, comments I wanted to... Um, I, I wanted to address one says what do you think sister how Islam is spreading in the West I don't um, I don't completely understand but I'm going to try and answer what I think this question means and um, to to the person who submitted it if I answer it wrong if you could follow up in the comments so I could correct my answer um, I, this could mean a couple different things, uh, either like as a sort of quiz, like how do I think Islam is spreading, in which case, um, I mean, there are a lot of converts, alhamdulillah, I'm one of them, yay, and uh, also Muslims tend to have more, uh, more children on average than other religious denominations. Um, if you're asking what I think, like, how, if I think it's doing well, or, or something, um, I mean, yeah, <laughs> I, I think I have a couple different opinions on that actually, uh, because on one hand, I, I do say that, um, you know, obviously I converted, right. And I, I know many converts, you know, I can name, you know, half a dozen just off the top of my head who I know in my life. Um, and so obviously, you know, something's going well. On the other hand, I think uh, we Muslims do a disservice to ourselves because uh, and this this is something, another good topic that affects us here in the West, though not only women. Um, this is, uh, we, we shoot ourselves in the foot a little bit. Uh, churches are known to be very welcoming. Um, there are a lot of great charity programs from churches. Um, they're like, you can probably tell by my tone of voice that I'm really impressed with, I mean, not all obviously, but you know, a great deal of, of Christian organizations here in this area of the world just do this, um, uh, again with the comments, sorry. Um, okay. Oh yes, they have a lot of great programs to help others, not only Christians, but other religions as well. Um, but we don't have that as much in mosques. Uh, I, I do understand on one hand, the desire to be very insular, like we, you know, Muslims are not in a great place. <laughs> you know, like, um, we, a lot of Muslims are 
are discriminated against. It's it's a real issue. So I understand the the want to just you know stay in our own communities and take care of ourselves. But for one thing, that can contribute to that unmaskedness that we were talking about because new converts don't feel welcome. Um, but also, I think it does a disservice because we have this golden opportunity to to promote an, a true Islamic picture. Um, what is what are things that are required of Muslims? I mean, you you scroll through your pace, your Facebook page on any Islamic page, and doubtless you're going to find uh, lots of stories of the prophet like oh you know mashallah he he was being so generous to this people even though he you know he, he threw garbage on him or, or whatever the story like that is the true sunnah that is the the example that should be followed so while of course we need to take care of ourselves and our safety we should also be following the sunnah of the prophet um which is you know reaching out not only to other Muslims, but to other religions and other people as well. Um, offering help, uh, making fundraisers, uh, getting involved in the community in, in ways that don't only benefit Muslims, but benefit all of our neighbors. Um, when we're commanded to take care of our neighbors, we are not commanded to only take care of our Muslim neighbors. And I'm going into a little bit of luxury right now, so I'll, I'll stop. Um, one commenter suggested that sisters should learn to defend ourselves. I think that's a great idea. Of course, this always comes with a, ca a caveat. Even if you don't know how to defend yourself and something happens to you, it is never, ever, ever your fault. It is always the fault of the person who is the aggressor. However, I think that's a good idea. I took a self-defense class a couple months ago and it was terrific. So I, I, definitely, um, I definitely recommend that. I'm now, pardon me for one moment because I'm scrolling down to see if I can catch up. Okay. Um, okay, and also make sure I have Quran and Sunnah to back up my comment about marriage and Islam. Um, please, if you, I mean, I am absolutely open to being corrected. If you see anything in, in the Sunnah or in Quran that says that marriage is required upon all Muslims, then please correct me. Um, but I don't, I've never come across um, I've never come across anything that sh that shows it to be uh, required myself. Uh, someone mentioned that our mes our messages are filled with self-serving committee members. I think I mean while of course of course this is not true of all mosques, and I don't like to make those disclaimers, but it's it's not true of all. There I'm sure there are some that's good. I think that is another thing that really contributes to. Um, to the, you know, like going back to the beginning, being unmasked, that's something that really contributes to it. People who are just looking out for themselves, not looking out for the community and the community's best interests. And pardon me again, I'm just scrolling really quick. Um, okay. All right. So I'm to the end of the comments. Uh, I suppose. I've got a couple more minutes left and there's one more topic I wanted to talk about. Um, and this is something that happens all over the world and you will see a lot of people posting about it, about uh, this issue that goes on the, in the Arab world. Um, but I think we need to be mindful of it. Um, we, we need to be mindful of it in the West as well. Muslims love to give platitudes about how there is no racism in Islam and uh, we are not to be racist, which is obvious. Um, no, you know, no Arab is better than non-Arab. No non-Arab is better than Arab, etc., etc. Um, but we need to put this into practice, and especially here in Western society where the issue of racism and especially discrimination against um, against the black members of our communities, and this is not just in Muslim communities and non-Muslim communities as well. This is something that's really, um, you know, on the forefront of, of issues at hand. Um, pause 
it burden of proof is not you can't prove that something's not obligatory that's not possible logically but anyway um so i think we need to be really mindful not to just say nice things like the oh no racism in is is in islam but really take a look at our practices every day um, when you are called out for doing something, saying something racist, rather than doubling down and saying, I'm not racist, I'm Muslim, there's no racism in Islam. Really look at your actions. Um, if, if, you, if you told someone, you know, what you just said is offensive to Muslims, and they said, and they said to you, oh no, that's not offensive to Muslims, it's blah blah blah, it's just a joke, it's just funny, it's whatever, I'm just... You know, I'm not talking about you, I'm talking about other Muslims, etc., etc., etc. Um, that would be offensive and wrong, and you would be offended by it rightly, because it's not up to them to decide whether they're being offensive. You, as a Muslim, are offended by what they're saying. Um, and I think that we really need to be mindful of this as well. Um, it's not just a matter of women becoming unmasked, but of Muslims of color who are finding that they're not welcome in our in our communities and our mosques. Um, I remember talking one time about my conversion experience where I was really, really welcomed into the community, alhamdulillah. Um, like everyone was so kind and welcoming to me. And I was telling this to a group of, of other Muslim women and there was there was a, a black woman who was a convert and she told her her story and it was a, the difference was uh, shocking uh, no one no one cared there was I mean I converted in a mosque she converted privately and there was uh, no one was interested in helping her when she went to a mosque to try and learn more it was more of a like throw some literature and get her out of the way sort of thing uh, none of the women talked to her uh, she was a, she was a young woman as well. I converted when I was 19. I think she was in her early 20s. Um, no one was interested in learning uh, learning about her for marriage, anything like that. It was it was shocking and saddening and and disheartening. So while there should there is no um, there is no racism in Islam, there is definitely racism amongst Muslims, and it's so easy to point to the issues that exist in the Gulf states, especially with racism, and I, I lived there, I saw it. It's, I mean, the racism is appalling, but we need to remember that we have issues here as well that we need to be actively working on. Um, with that, my time is up. I see there's, um, there's some good conversation about whether or not marriage is required going on in the comments. Um, so far, it looks like everything is very respectful. Um, which is great. Uh, and thank you everyone for following along. I think I was a little bit more disjointed than usual just because I'm trying to keep up with the comments, but I really appreciate everyone engaging. Um, so I guess I will uh, say salam and goodbye for today, and I will see you all again next month, inshallah.